How are you doing? Uh, good. What are you looking for? Uh, you got King Kong 5? Ah, I just got that one in today. Nice. Thank you. Uh, this is not King Kong 5. This is King of the Lost World. What are you talking about? A giant gorilla movie in 2005? What other one is there? Apparently this one. Well, I got all these other smash hits here. I've got Atlantic Rim, I've got Android Cop, I've got Young Gary, and the instant classic by Steven Spielberg himself, Alan Coyter Man in the Temple of the Skulls. Do you mean Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull? Uh... Welcome to another Import Legacy. I'm Jose Cambrellan. Many classics have come and gone, but for every one of those, there will be a dozen cash-ins to go along with them. The notion of creating a piece to ride the coattails of a popular one has in and of itself become a genre in all shapes and sizes. Musicals, action films, science fiction, drama, you name it. Mockbusters can also be separated into subcategories on how they're approached. There are straight up ripoffs that we're all familiar with, then there are parodies which mostly spoof the film or genre each one is satirizing. And finally, there's one more inspired by the certain piece despite executives that want in on the box office action. When comparing, say, Tetsujin 28 and Get a Robo, the two don't share that much in common, other than both of the main actors of the shows having a giant robot fighting other robots and monsters. Compare that with Star Wars and Spaceballs. One is a science fiction extravaganza that mixes different film genres together perfectly, while Spaceballs is a satirical love letter of all things science fiction from the 70s and 80s. Then, when you compare Michael Bay's Transformers to Asylum's Transmorphers, you can see clear differences. In fact, the name Transmorphers speaks for itself. At times, there can be so many mockbusters that they can create genres. A perfect example would be Bruce Lee's Game of Death. After his unfortunate passing, Robert Klaus, the director for Enter the Dragon, desired to complete the film on his behalf. Once the film was released, a swarm of different films came along to cash in on Bruce Lee thus creating that Bruce Lee exploitation subgenre. There are even studios today that specialize on making nothing but mockbusters. Asylum started with their version of Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds from 2005. Since then, their reign of plagiarism is now glorified with the Sci-Fi Channel, which gladly show several of their own films, especially the masterpiece that is Sharknado. But in truth, as well as in the more blatant ripoffs, all of them have something in common. Most narratives we've seen over the years always utilize older ideas, but build upon them and pull a twist to try to keep it fresh. And in some respects, knockoffs can attribute to this. For any hardcore filmmakers out there, you'll notice when a classic homages an older film, either through references, and in some cases, straight up using the same scenes as other films. Ripoffs can serve as being a precursor to that notion and even how film remakes work, taking the same idea except updating for either a modern or foreign demographic. So the next time you plan on buying a film that looks like it could be a mockbuster, just keep in mind you'll be adding on to the continuing cycle of storytelling. Well, that's all the time we have for now. If you like this and want to see more great content, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. For now, have a nice day and thank you for watching.